obviously, I, I love The Godfather, the movie, and this this uh, uh, ten part series called The Offer came out a while ago, maybe a year or so, I guess, something like that. Is it longer than a year? Jesus. Uh, and it's the story of you know what it took to make The Godfather. All the shit with Paramount, the shit with the mafia, Joe Colombo, all this stuff. So I figure I'll watch that. Uh, again, it's one of these things where I swear to you, you could fucking wrap this up in a couple of episodes. I don't know why they're so compelled to make these 10 part series uh, where, yeah, you could definitely wrap it up in a, a couple of parts. But, uh, not bad, not bad, a lot of fan service in this thing. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, it's based around The Godfather uh, and the making of it. Everyone knows The Godfather, so they gotta put fan service in there. They gotta put the shit in, like, oh look, look, he's taking the cannolis. Off the table, remember? In The Godfather, when they said, leave the gun, take the cannolis? Remember Clemenza cooking with Michael? I get it, I saw this in The Godfather. So it's, you know, the making, but then they're, they got a mob angle in there with, and all I remember reading years ago was that uh, some higher up in the mafia, and it might have been Joe Colombo, was a little upset at the use of the word mafia in it. And it was settled pretty quickly and they went along. But they're making it like a huge plot line and the producer has this relationship with Joe Colombo and the mafia and all kinds of uh, like peripheral mafia stuff. And then they have them doing certain things that look like scenes in The Godfather. So I don't know. I understand it's supposed to be entertainment and it's not a documentary on the making of The Godfather. It's kind of a, uh, you know, a docudrama, something like that. Colin Hanks plays the, Giovanni Ribisi is hilarious. He plays Joe Colombo. He's got this voice on, he's putting a voice on the whole fucking time. And again, he, uh, he continues his record of playing a version of whatever he's supposed to be playing. And he's playing mob boss, Joe Colombo. Because uh, if you've ever seen him, um, Saving Private Ryan, he was a medic. If you recall, Giovanni Rubisi will always play a version of whatever he's supposed to. Remember uh, um, uh, Boiler Room? He was the stockbroker in that one. Sure. Do you remember the movie The Other Sister? Where he was <laughs> He was literally <laughs> Way over the top. He went full. He did go full fucking in that. He's playing like uh, marching band music while he's fucking. Uh, what was her name? Juliet Lewis. And we had sex. We had that. We love it. Like, oh, you are full, full blown. Yeah. So Giovanni always plays a good. And this, he's a uh, mob boss. Uh. Worth it if you have as much time as your pal Anthony has to waste. <laughs> you know, at one point I'm watching and going, should I just go out and play video games? I'm kind of awake now. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's just way too long. All these Netflix things, they do that stuff. What was the Dahmer one and everything? They're just way too fucking long. They reiterate a lot of shit. It, it's, it's just uh, uh, going through the motions. Uh, so, yeah. And what we want to see is kind of how the movie's made. Uh, yeah, I like the behind-the-scenes studio stuff of uh, the, the never-ending line of executives that want to fucking uh, cut budget and stop the deal. That's kind of interesting. But I think they're adding way too much to the mob angle. Um, and again, because it's, it's relatively recent, they had to make it uh, where women are very influential in it to the point where nothing would have gotten done. Like hidden figures, like the black women with the moon landing, uh, nothing would have gotten done without the producer's secretary. 
and Mario Puzo's wife. Like Mario Puzo put out a book and it bombed. Uh, there was a small part in the book where he talks about the mob and the wife is like, that's the part everyone likes. Why don't you write a book about what you know, the mafia? And Puzo's like, why don't I? Thank you, wife. So they got, you know, and I have to honestly believe in the late 60s, uh, Mario Puzo wasn't putting any credence in what his fucking wife had to say. Cook the sauce and shut the fuck up. So I'm just kind of like, ah, I know. They, they have to do it. And again, the producer who is, you know, if, if this was a real guy <laughs> that really acted like this, a miracle worker to get this fucking movie done. But then there's these little moments where he would have reached a complete dead end if it wasn't for his precious secretary woman who's an independent, strong guy. Shut up. But that's what that's the world we live in. Revisionist uh, history must must uh, happen in every movie. Women have to be empowered to the point where nothing would have gotten done without them. Race is there a race angle in it? Let me think. Uh, no, not really. Not really. Um, which is kind of refreshing. <laughs> I think even they thought, like, what are we gonna do? Have uh, you know? James Kahn, Sonny Corleone, married to a black woman. <laughs> Can't really do that. So I, I, I watched that. I think I'm, I'm four episodes from the end. I'm just really ready to just go to the last episode at this point. I don't think I'm going to get anything new out of the next three and then maybe wrap it up with uh, episode four. But I'll, I'll watch the, the rest of it. 